Welcome to CulturCast. My name is Sister Mary Michael, and I'm a Dominican Sister of Mary, Mother of the Eucharist. You may have seen us, as we are located all around the world. Following in the footsteps of St. Dominic, our mission is to be teachers and preachers. And this calling puts us in front of all kinds of interesting people, in interesting places, doing interesting things. All for a great purpose, much larger than any one of us, like being on Oprah, the Dominican Sisters of Mary invited us to their big day. Look at this. On the top of the Billboard classical music charts, or on a television game show. You better believe it! Join me every week as the Culture Cast takes you inside Heaven's Kitchen to show you how to cook for an army and become a culinary artist. Or go on the road with the sisters and become traveling pilgrims as you learn all the things that can be seen and those that are unseen. Or sit down with Mother Assumpta Long as she unlocks a few stories from some unsuspecting guests. Join us for unlikely adventures, and together, let's learn new things, see new places, and meet new faces on The Culture Cast. This week on The Culture Cast, join us for conversations with Mother Assumpta Long. I am so excited because I get to interview a crazy millennial. Um, no, no, I think they're wonderful, but I, he might be crazy because I understand that he went to medical school, but then decided to be an evangelist. So maybe you could tell us, Joy, about Joy McCoy. Sure. You could yeah. tell us about how that happened. Yeah. I mean, really. Yeah, my name is Joy McCoy, and I grew up in the Ann Arbor area. So I first met all of you guys when uh, my family moved up here and I started going to Spiritu Sanctus schools. I attended the one in Ann Arbor. Uh, I was there from fourth grade through eighth grade. My teachers were Tina Sabga and Edmund Miller and they were extremely helpful for me. And um, and what was like, since I, you know, middle school is not an easy time of life. And, Who was the principal? Uh, Sister John Dominic. Yeah, <laughs> Good. absolutely. Um, he avoided me at that time. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Um, yeah, but uh, very very good place to be, and um, deeply grateful for my time there. Good. And then uh, ended up going to University of Michigan for college, and then uh, stayed at the University of Michigan for medical school. Mm-hmm. And in college, I was always extremely focused on uh, getting into not just med school, but a very good med school. Okay. I was uh, exceedingly ambitious, but very ambitious about worldly things and being successful in all the ways that you know one feels like they should be successful if you listen yeah. to the world i guess mm-hmm. I, I thought that if i got into a great med school then i would be somebody yeah you know just yeah, and, and then of course that didn't deliver on on what i wanted to deliver on um, as idols never do yeah so i ended up getting into a bunch of very good med schools did the whole interview process and the, that whole time i was starting to sense that that I wasn't actually wasn't computing, but in my heart, I was starting to sense that something's not right. Something doesn't feel very good here. There, there was a dissatisfaction. There was a kind of just like a, a vertigo in life. You know, I, I just all of a sudden didn't quite have my bearings and ended up going, like I said, going to uh, University of Michigan for medical school. And, um, you know, I thought once I got to, once I just started med school and really started doing this thing that was going to be so great, then finally, like, it'll, the, this kind of vertigo feeling would go away. Um, uh, it was really this, like, spiritual vertigo. What God, what was okay. happening was God was allowing a lot of, it was allowing the idol to fall. You know, it was uh, this, uh, it was melting. I guess, you know, if you think of an idol as a statue, it was to get like, your attention. <laughs> yeah, he was starting to yeah, get my attention yeah, and he was yeah. really, um, because, you know, during this whole time I was praying, I was going to prayer okay. meetings, I was in men's yeah. groups, I was, uh, I was really trying to dial into God, but mm-hmm. there was definitely a little bit of a, um, well, it was just work that had to be done, you know? Uh, yeah, God was carving me out big time. Very goal oriented, kind of like direction uh, focused person. And so it, all of a sudden I feel like I didn't have that because mm-hmm. med school was that or getting into a med school was that as, as, as that kind of started to evaporate and I was there in med school um, 
I just, I, I just didn't know which way was up. Life was very confusing for me. But during that time, I started to really cry out to God more and more. I started to really pray a whole lot more. I um, really started to read a lot more. Um, I just, yeah, I just clicked into this new guy. I, I felt like I really had no other option because <laughs> I was just, I was quite confused. It was yeah. a very strange time. It's like hard to communicate. Uh, why it was so strange, but it was very strange. And um, God then began to do certain things where he really started to release a lot of that pressure and um, really released it in a sense of like just greater uh, friendship with him, greater intimacy with him, greater knowledge of him, greater like companionship with him, just a closer union with him, you know? Um, And uh, man, when you taste God, (laughs) It, it's, it, you're, yeah. you're done, you know, <laughs> uh, like the greatest adventure of life really is the greater and greater discovery of the living God. Yeah. And um, as that started to happen for me more and more, um, I uh, began to really think, OK, maybe I was at the same time I thought I was being here and calls to be a priest. So mm-hmm. I ended up taking a year off of med school to discern all this stuff because I didn't know, oh, OK, maybe goodness. I'm not supposed to be in med school. Maybe I'm supposed to go to seminary. Maybe neither. I don't, didn't really know. But during that year off, it was just an amazing year. It was just oh, the, the these things that God had begun to do in terms of carving out. He really, he only ever carves out so that he can fill in. What did you, you know? do during this year? I worked at a coffee shop. Okay. And, uh, were your parents crazy? <laughs> yes, but my parents were, because okay, I had a full ride scholarship to, <laughs> oh, to med school oh, as well. I see. So they were I like, see. son, this is an amazing opportunity. What are oh, you doing? Yeah. Just finish, just finish, yeah. just finish, you know? Yeah. Um, so yes, it was not an easy decision for me to make for uh, my family. There was a whole lot of darkness sure. uh, in me sure. and in my mind about what I was doing, but uh, I was just trying to do what I felt like the Lord was asking me to do. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I worked at a coffee shop. I interned at uh, what I now work at. Um, I just interned with them for a little bit and uh, ran some things called like an alpha course Okay, um, so I was okay. experimenting with ministry mm-hmm, things, mm-hmm. Um, but it was a very kind of stripped down year. I didn't do a whole, I wasn't uh, trying to achieve a whole lot, you know. Yeah. I prayed a bunch, and I had a very good rhythm of, of prayer each day, and was reading. Um, was reading really good stuff for. Right. I was just I was right. just like right. I was hungry for right. for you know feeding my mind I guess. Um, so at the end, the it was a fantastic year. The things God did for me that year are just in some ways beyond communication in terms of this the the depth of of union once again and a kind of missionary outburst at, right. at the same time I, I went the hound of God after you <laughs> yes yeah. yeah yeah and uh i I just was I was overcome with a new love for people oh, like a deep deep love for people that's beautiful. and particularly uh, helping them find Jesus. Oh. Um, and so these people I was working in a coffee shop with who were very typical barista people who were, you know, uh, on the journey, shall we yeah. say. Mm-hmm. And they, uh, I just, I just loved being with them. I love being with them in their pain. I love being with them in their, in their kind of confusion oh. in life. I love being with them, trying to, trying to find a way to be a bridge between them and Jesus, you know? Um, and I had all kinds mm-hmm. of ways in which like new gifts and and capacities were coming alive in me of mm-hmm. being able to uh, like just notice what the spirit was doing in each situation and in each conversation and uh, and you know steer it towards Jesus certain ways mm-hmm. and pray with people pray with them for healing like right in the middle of a coffee shop and oh, um, just yeah all kinds yeah. of stuff like that. So, but at the end of that year, the Lord very much said, you're not supposed to be a priest, go back to med school, and uh, I'll continue to speak. Um, so, I had no desire to go back to med school, but did it anyway, oh. and knowing that God God was in control of all this, and through med school, I uh, ended up meeting somebody, got married, but through doing that, my desire did change for med school. It got less and less and less and less and less. <laughs> so, at the end of, of medical school, I... I had to fundraise my own salary. Um, I had to finish up med school and then kind of start uh, not applying to residency, having no intention to go through with medicine, and then just sort of career shift towards doing what I was always doing on a volunteer basis, but now mm-hmm. more full time and in a larger capacity. 
That is amazing. Listen, God was surely working in your life. Now, let me uh, get this straight. When you when you lived, where did you go from there? How did you get into full-time ministry? I mean, yeah. from that, I mean... Uh, yeah, for a long time, I had connections to something called Renewal Ministries, which is headquartered yeah. here in Ann Arbor yeah. and mm -hmm. run by the likes of uh, oh, yeah. Ralph Ralph Martin, Martin. Yeah. Sister Ann Shields, yes, Peter yeah, Herbeck. Sure. I had done mission trips with them. I had also been very much a part of... Uh, this young adult outreach that they have called ID 916. Okay. And um, who a good friend of mine, um, and now my boss, uh, was was running, a guy named Pete Burek. Mm -hmm. um, Pete and I had done a lot of things together. Okay. And okay. then, um, so yeah, it was actually, it was so, ID 916 was the thing that I ended up joining. Mm -hmm. And um, it was, it was pretty clear from when it was like, a, a no to med school was very much a yes to trying to uh, take the things that I was doing with ID916 already okay, kind of okay. on an unofficial basis and just just put it into stone more and make it more full-time. Uh, Joey, how do you find, um, do you do a lot with with young people? Yeah. I mean, you know, you think, um, you know, since, you know, we're looking at maybe at the virtue of justice, you think, you know, in our culture where it's dog-eat-dog, -dog, you mm. know, what, do you how do you find the young people? I mean, how do you evangelize them? How do you yeah. um, see that justice is any part of their life? Or yeah, right. You know, right. Yeah, yeah. So it's such a great question and a great topic. I think something, yeah, justice in terms of young young adults isn't yes. something we think of yeah. a whole lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I work with twenties and thirties particularly. Oh, okay. So kind of okay. post college. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The millennials. Yeah, the, yeah, the millennials. <laughs> They're great. I mean, I love them. Yeah, so yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Each generation has its quirks. Yeah, that's you know? right. No, no, yeah. that's they they they've got some wonderful. Yeah. Qualities, yeah. So I, I guess um, with young people, I think uh, we you know we are obviously come into a world that is highly saturated in technology. Yes. And all of the ways in which it's affecting society and things on a communal yeah, level. Definitely. So um, most people uh, grew up in an environment that made that technology makes you very, very self-focused that, that's okay that's right it, it isolates people mm -hmm. in a lot of for all mm -hmm. the good you know helpful ways it can mm -hmm. uh it can you know help us achieve things it, it can also isolate people right. and make you more self-sufficient yeah, yeah. and all that kind of Maybe. stuff <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. so something that uh uh i you know young people talk about a lot Millennials, I guess, talk about a lot is, is a desire for community. Right, um, right. Or, or, and even if they have no idea really what that means mm -hmm, or what they're... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But everyone, everyone, that, that word is everywhere. You know, yes, it's in... Yes, Like, like they go, a grocery store near me has this room called the community room. Oh, where you're kidding. It's this, this room where hopefully community can happen. Because oh, you're kidding. It's like, like, like a grocery store has to... <laughs> That has is to do amazing. that. You know? I think, yeah, young people are very isolated. The release valve for that is often your career, um, I think, or, or finding the perfect job, you know, or finding a way in which you're, uh, you want to make an impact on the world, you want to make a difference, you want to discover your passions and then live your passions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I think the, the main ways in which I find um, evangelization being effective for this, what isn't just millennials, it's just kind of yeah. how the world is going. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I mean, older people are being affected by this too. Um, uh, and, and younger generations are also gonna be affected sure, by it. Sure. Let me talk about people in the church who are already trying to be believers of Jesus. Okay. Um, the way I think leading them into a, like a sense of justice mm -hmm. is super important because yeah, the, mm -hmm. the, the faith without other people. Yes. Yeah. Unless you're called to be a hermit, which is basically yeah. nobody, the faith without other yeah. people is uh -huh. is nonsensical. Sure. Right. The, sure. the faith is is going to be lived out with other people. Mm -hmm. um, God always he leads us up towards himself, and then he very much leads us in towards other people, mm -hmm. out towards other people. Mm -hmm. um, so helping helping young people um, kind of break out of that cocoon, yeah. I think, and and take a risk and courageously try to. Um, uh, really like be, be communal together mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. discovering family again the, mm -hmm. the ex extended yeah. family yeah. type of yeah. thing yeah. Yeah. which has been eradicated from a lot of our the That's western right. culture right. um, 
And this, this really trying to be a people of God together mm-hmm. on the move in the world mm-hmm. is the only way I see the new evangelization um, or just evangelization in general, how it has always worked and how it will work yeah. in the future yeah. um, is by the body of Christ, not just living as a bunch of isolated individuals mm-hmm. that randomly mm-hmm. bump into each other whenever they, yeah. whenever they, whenever it just kind of randomly happens. Yeah. Um, but by really um, finding ways to be the people of God together it, as an extended family on a mission together. Yeah. How do, how do you do this practically? Let's say yeah. that um, uh, in your in your work of evangelization, right? How do you how do you um, implement this with, yeah. with the people you work with? Yeah. So uh, things that I mainly lead through ID nine sixteen and things that I'm experimenting with um, in in our chapters across the, mm-hmm. the states that we work in um, are uh, forming forming young adults into really going past the programmatic approach. Okay. To, to church. Okay. So church is often lived as a collection of programs and events, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and uh, while those can be sometimes helpful, they're kind of like vitamins for a diet. And mm-hmm. if all you're eating are vitamins, yeah. you're starving, yeah. Yeah. right? So yeah. um, instead trying to uh, help people really uh, um, say, let's, let's actually live, let's, what if we could actually live more as a community together Mm-hmm. Form a community mm-hmm. of like twenty to thirty mm-hmm. people okay. that really could live mm-hmm. um, into a certain mission context together. Whether that's you know uh, young adults, singles, young families, um, the homeless, baristas, people who love sock, whatever. Mm-hmm. Right, you pick a mission context together that you are then sent to go make disciples of. Okay. okay. Um, and this is, I mean, this is very much, or or you or you could you know you could pick also like a certain neighborhood. Like we are sent as an extended family to live into the mission of of making disciples of evangelizing this neighborhood. Okay. Um, this is I mean it's very much what the old monastic uh, mm-hmm, the, the mm-hmm. monastic mm-hmm. age was all about. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's the old evangelization as well as I think the the way forward for the new evangelization. But in a lot of doing this, it's just it really is trying to awake in awaken in people a sense of justice, awaken in awaken in people a sense of you know, justice like like we learned about is giving to each person what is their due, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and what they're due is yeah, love. Is love, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, um, how can I, as a follower of Jesus, be indifferent to 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 the the plight of my neighbors? Mm-hmm. How can I be indifferent to um, specifically their not having a relationship with Jesus? Mm-hmm. Um, and anyone who doesn't have that relationship in some way is mm-hmm. is massively suffering in life mm-hmm. um, because we're not we're, we're made for him and if we're not yeah. living with him yeah. in some way then we're we're living in a way that we're not meant to live mm-hmm. now a lot yeah this this there's a certain hardness of heart in all of us and there's a certain mm-hmm. certain parts of our heart that are dead you know mm-hmm. and you learn in med school that a part of the heart like if part of the heart dies like in a heart yeah. attack yeah. it's just like a scar right it's just yeah. It's just tough, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it doesn't move. It's not supple anymore, mm-hmm. and it, the heart forever is kind of beating mm-hmm. off kilter. Mm-hmm. Um, and so God wants to take those dead parts of our heart and t- make them come alive. Mm-hmm. And what that looks like is greater love for him, a tenderness towards him, a, do- a docility towards what he wants mm-hmm. us to do, and being his son, being his daughter, being his disciple. And then the simultaneously with that, he gives us his heart for other people. Mm-hmm. And uh, unless those who are trying to live a deeply Catholic life can really become alive in this way, mm-hmm. um, then evangelization has no, has no shot because it's, yeah. it's not just about saying all the right words and getting right, people to programs. Right, right, it's right. always going to be about relationship first mm-hmm, and foremost. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, years ago where, I, I, it's, it's all over now, where families, it used to be like you'd have families together now most families are spread out all over the country right and they right. don't have that and you've got plus that you you mentioned technology which i'm so glad you mentioned because it's just isolating us yeah so you know god we have to we have to look at the culture in which we're living and figure out so thank you joy i can't i can't thank you enough are the people working in evangelization like you are just to have that zeal for, mm. you know, 
for God, you know, yeah. for, for you yeah. know, to want people to love God, so that actually God wants us to be happy. Right. And happiness comes from a spiritual life. I right. mean, you know, like you say, piety. So, um, God bless you and what you're doing. Thank and you, And just keep it up and listen. Um, yeah. It's wonderful. So we're, you know, grateful for what you're doing and, and just spread the word and get more young people because they're wonderful. They're the ones that got the energy and the drive. And yeah. uh, if you can just head them in the right direction. Yeah. But so many are just, you know, going out there in the wrong direction, you know, just hurt them, yeah, you yeah, know, right. and, and send, then send them out. So Yeah. Anyway, and a lot of young people are very much not, they're, they're hungry for, for, for doing life a different way. They're not just, yeah. oh yeah, let me just do the American thing yeah. th that has kind of been handed down to me. A lot yeah. of young people aren't very satisfied with that, yeah. which I think is actually something good you can tap into because there's a lot of ways in which um, to, to really be the more faithful people of God, we have to break with a lot of the cultural mm -hmm. ways of doing things, the consumeristic ways of doing things, That's the individualistic right. ways That's of doing right. things. And, uh -huh. um, yeah, so yeah, just to your point, it's really fun working with young people. Oh, it's great. And yeah. you know, just think how it's beautiful to see how God worked through your life, even through it. I think he works through trauma to bring mm. out the best in people. If totally. we didn't suffer, you know, I just think that brings out the best in people if they can not agree more. That good well yeah. god bless you and thank you for thank you for what you're doing just keep up the good work and, and get more people in the army yeah god <laughs> good thank you if you've enjoyed this particular show of the culture cast please make sure to like and subscribe to our youtube channel or follow us on twitter but as always all of this content can be found on go